welcome to a special edition of Medicine of Meadville. I'm Dwayne Kohler from Meadville Medical Center and joined today by Jennifer Blockman from Hospice. Good Jennifer, to see welcome you again. back. Thank you. Okay, so let me just kind of throw you out there a scenario. Um, families join in hospice and I'm doing okay, you know, getting worse, doing okay, but right. wouldn't it be nice if, you know, I may not be able to get to see all my grandkids and, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could sort of leave them a message? I mean, did you ever hear anything like that? that all the time, all the time. And Meadville Medical Center and Hospice, uh, with our cameraman, Dwayne here, and, and <laughs> director, is offering a project that families and patients really have um, a way to leave a mark for their families that you know they may not be able to see. Sometimes we have people who have grandchildren who have yet to be born, and they really want to be able to communicate thoughts to them. And it's called the Legacy Project. Now, I would never talk about a particular customer, a particular patient, without some very specific permission, and they want everyone to hear about this. So, Mitzi Addison is one of our customers. She's a hospice. delight. She, a delight. She, the, the family, um, uh, it was our first, was our first guinea pig here for for our legacy video project. Right. So, we're going to show you that in a little bit. Um, I, I wasn't exactly sure going into it, you know, how it was going to work exactly, and and I arrived at the house with the camera, and Mitzi uh, was there with her daughter and grandson, and and uh, so, some of our staff from hospice, and she had a whole page of notes. So I think she wanted to cover. So I'm like, wow, she she's, ready, she's ready to go. She's She'd ready been to go. preparing for that for weeks. <laughs> well, they were very excited to see the, the first draft of this. And um, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy that they want everybody else to see it, too. So uh, we're going to show you a legacy video here today on Medicine in Meadville. Um, so down the road, I mean, if, if, if future customers of hospice, this is available to you for free. It we're, is. we're happy to do this. It is. Um, we make copies for her that she can share with the family. It could be, you know, put out there in social media or, or other ways. But um, I think it's a great thing. It's, I, it, it's a very beautiful tribute. Those is family, what it is. family stories. You don't want those to be forgotten. You know, it, 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 right. all, all those cool things. I, I think folks. Well, I, I'm curious to see what the folks out there will think about it yeah, too. But me I too. found it to be a tremendous experience. One of my favorite things I've ever done in my, in my working <laughs> years at Needville Medical Center. It's just beautiful when okay. you watch it. So watch this video. Hi everybody, my name is Mitzi. I have written about four books myself and they are down to my children, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. As we go a little bit further into this video, you're going to see these books and all that I have written. I would like to first start with me, Mitzi Addison. I am 77 years old. I had a birthday on March 11th. I married Walter Addison, the joy and love of my life. We had three children together. We had Scott. We also have I think what was Heidi. It? Princess Heidi, the love of our life. And last, we have Roger. Roger is uh, mechanically minded, extremely intelligent with uh, tools and things he can figure out. From uh, those, Walter and I was married 22 years. He died at 46 of a heart attack. I chose at that time not to remarry. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful life. We had our home in Conway. We had two Lincoln Continentals. We had a cottage at Pomatooming. And my mother and dad lived across the street from us. My children, all three, have been successful. Uh, then came along our grandchildren. Our girl is Madison, and our boy is Indiana. We call him Indy. 
His name is Indiana Blaze. No laughter out there. I see all of you laughing at that name. His name is Indiana. I, today, you can have any name you want. And this is the name that my kids decided for. We decided for all the good Christian names. But that's the way it goes. Indiana and Madison. And your grandchildren. That was my great-grandchildren. Yes. Grandchildren, I have Jesse, Matthew, Dustin, Denon, Ashley, and Dylan. I'm proud that I have lived to be 77, considering so much has went through my life since Walter died. Walter died and left me these children. Home, cottage, cars, and a little bit of money. I didn't think I would ever get through these days with these children. But through my love for them, I did. You're going to see pictures of the books that I wrote to them and how much I loved them. I had a great career, too. I had a 30-year career as a registered professional nurse at Allegheny General Hospital. I was a uh, nurse in the maternity and obstetrical departments. I did C-sections and regular surgery and deliveries and recoveries. I am very, very proud of my career. And my children helped me every bit of the way. Um, I really think that I had a fantastic time from birth until Daddy was 46. After that, I would say it was a little bit hard. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a little bit tough. Uh, when I was in college, I met with someone very famous and well-known, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She has a signed book on death and dying. If ever you have the opportunity to meet somebody and she's available, do it. But I think that now she has died. But she has left a legacy, a legacy of information that is doing people like me good. I needed that book then. I need it now. And I will still need it in the future. Before my dad died, he lived in a little cottage across from us in Pimatuming. My father made 35 violins. He handmade them. When I was a little girl, I used to hold the bands while he clamped them down. Most of them are still out and around. They are very good sounding. My daughter said she will buy me a bow, and when she does, I can practice again. But if not, I will just continue with my piano, my grand piano, and my keyboard. After I have all my equipment going, I can get back into music business again. Also, when I was in college, I wrote a paper for Penn State. The paper was on Hanson. I doubt if anyone knows Hanson today. Hanson was a man with leprosy. And he needed help in getting people to understand what leprosy is. Leprosy is a disease 
that is very catchy to the next person and they have to be isolated. Mr. Hansen got the island in Hawaii and is now known as Hansen's Island where all, all of the leprosy people go. If they do not want to go there, they are isolated in other parts. Uh, it was a very well organized uh, job done by Mr. Hansen. After I wrote that paper, gave it to Mr. Hansen, and other people had read it, that paper was sent to Penn State in Pennsylvania. And the last I heard, which was many, many years ago, it was used for a study program for one of their psychology programs. Well, up till this time, I have written books and books and have moved out of my big home in Conway up to my little home at Pamatuming in with my daughter Heidi and with lots of love and children we are making a wonderful beautiful home very similar to what we had in Conway a home that you can just breathe love and they love us and we love them as we got older we had some family reunions our reunions really mean a lot to us. I think that was a good idea too. And the uh, idea of having a picnic was brought by by my brother Roy. And that was a very good idea. Roy and Diane. Roy's my brother, and Diane's his wife. They have two marvelous children. Michael and Michelle. They are just like my family. Very close-knit, very much in love, and wonderful. Michelle, she is a social worker. And Michael, he's a, a, a woodworker. woodworker. A construction worker. And a construction worker. I also have another brother, Daniel. Daniel was a teacher at Meadville High School. He taught science. Biology. Biology. He, uh, well, missed because he retired. But he's very happy in his retirement. Dan married Kathy, and Kathy brought along two children. Two, two children. The boy is in Washington, D.C. with his father, and Ellen is here. The college that she goes to is Westminster. is Westminster College. She is there on a 3.9 college credit. When she graduated, she was valedictorian. Of course, we can't let Vicki out either. Vicki's uh, Dan's daughter, she was valedictorian. And when she graduated from high school, she married a valedictorian. I would say these kids really like education. Julie, she teaches in a Jewish school. She is the principal in Pittsburgh, and she's a marvelous person. The only way you can get them all together at once is with the family reunions. And once you get them together, you'll see what I say. They're the greatest in the world. We do have Joe and Carol. After my sister died, Carol has taken over as like another daughter for me. 
although nothing could ever replace Heidi, nothing. I want to just hit on one thing that's important to me, my piano lessons. I started my piano lessons when I was five years old, and I didn't quit taking uh, piano lessons until I was 18. I hope to be able to play you a little bit of music later on. My music is very, very valuable to me. Yes. George Washington. George Washington gave our five great grandfather a job of being a drummer boy for the military army when he came over from Germany and he used that legacy of his from Germany to teach drumming and fifing to the other players. So music was in us clear back then and that came from my dad's side. Uh, you have to understand love and life in order to understand music. It is one of the biggest creators of love in the world. Music. Get into music, sing it, dance it, learn it. You'll never regret it. Uh, after Daddy died, things changed immensely, as I said. At once, we hit the lottery. I hit the lottery for $110,000. But there were 11 of us that won. So therefore, I got about 10000 after taxes and everything was cleared. And I asked my children, what do you want to do with this newfound money? And in one voice they said, Disney World. I have a sweater from Disney World. I'd love to show it to you. I wore it for many years, and other people have also worn it. When I uh, brought it home, people found it hard to believe. This sweater was $100 when I bought it in Disney World. And uh, whoever wears it will always be lucky. Always be lucky, just like Minnie Mouse. Oh my, when we went, we drove. We drove down to Lorton, Virginia. And uh, how smart we were. <laughs> That's the laugh. We took 79 pairs of shoes with us. I don't know where Heidi thought we were going for four days. But we were carrying shoes out of that car like they were on sale. And they weren't, believe me, they weren't. We got all those shoes in the bedroom upstairs and then we couldn't find our own clothes to change in. But again, those kids had a blast. Heidi and Denise had the time of their life. And Jesse and Dustin enjoyed their days. They enjoyed the uh, uh, hotel. They enjoyed the bus or the truck. No, no, what is it now? Oh, airplane, new invention. They enjoyed the airplane coming down. It was uh, Heidi's second or third time on a plane, but it was Roger's first time. We didn't have all that hassle getting into a plane, but it was a nice ride down. Roger got on, knocked on the pilot's door, and said, hi, would you show me how to run this thing? Of course, he said, you have to go sit down in your seat and fasten in, and you'll hear us talk, and then we'll be running the plane. 
He came back to the chair and he says to Mom and to Heidi, keep your eyes shut so I can hear the pilot. <laughs> That's the kind of kids I had. They were marvelous. They weren't afraid to say anything. I don't think they'd be afraid of the president or God or anything. They're very much interested in life. Uh, during my regular days before I became famous, <laughs> my cousin met, uh, dated Joan Crawford's son. I don't know if any of you here would remember Joan Crawford. She is the girl that made the first, the first Mildred Pierce. And I see now that Mildred Pierce is going to come out on the video again. Well, Mildred Pierce was a marvelous, marvelous actress. And she uh, and Sonia got along quite well. But then Sonia and Joan Crawford's son, they broke up. So that was the end of my uh, career in Hollywood with Joan Crawford. But it was real. And we had an association with a big movie star. Oh, I don't know. There seems to be so much to talk about. When we travel to Seattle to visit Mount St. Helens, what devastation. What natural devastation. It brought tears to my eyes to see this. But it was worthwhile. Uh, love in Heidi's book is animals. Heidi loves every one of her animals. We have Lucky, our big white lab. We have Lucy. Lucy. We have Jack. Jack. He's, he is something. He is our smart. smart dog. We love him so much. Let me hold Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on up here, Jack. Jack, I wouldn't hurt this baby. Another little interesting hit, if you don't know how to teach your children to count, just take them to bingo like I did. <laughs> Our children learn to count. B1, B2, and you hear Dustin in the background saying, shut up Jesse, that's my number. But they truly learn through bingo how to count. When I came, I was an old lady. My hair was straggly. I couldn't eat. You see, I also had a stroke somewhere down there. And when I would eat, it would go off to the side. But she used no, uh, no special things. She just said, you're going to learn to eat, and you're going to learn to eat now, and you're going to learn to eat good. That was the end of it. If you take a look down here, those are my toes. Those are the new toes of the 77-year-old woman. No sense in having those old, dirty, yellow, curled-up toes. No, get this kind. No. Krista calls it red. I call it red, too. 
they keep me happy. I don't know what they do, but they do. They keep me happy. They fix my pictures for me. They take pictures of me. They uh, help me. You see my makeup job? This was done by Krista. She is also a beautician, but won't tell anybody because she doesn't want to leave me. I love her to pieces. Thank you. I do you. have four books full that I want them to read. It has all kind of advice. It tells them from the day they were born until the day I die. And the book is full of all good information. They have learned to go to funerals without being sad, but being respectful. They have learned to go to different churches without being the only one that can go to that church. My grandchildren have le learned a lot from my books and from my legacy and from me. I don't know what else I could tell you verbatim, but I am going to ask my daughter Heidi if she has anything verbatim. Do you have something to tell your mother? I love you, Miss. How much? <laughs> to the moon and back. I love you that much, too. Yeah. I think you're a wonderful daughter. Okay, I think that's about all I have to say at the moment. Welcome back. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. I know I enjoyed doing it. What did you think, Jennifer? What did you think of that? I had met her initially, and uh, it really these, these videos really portray the vibrance of her and, and really lets the families know her thoughts and her wisdom. And, um, and you know, all of our patients really have that to offer for their families. And, you know, it, it helps the families with a good memory when she will be gone. Um, it's just beautiful, and I loved how you ended it with that wave. With the, it brought with tears, music. tears to my eyes. The, the music was obviously very important. To yes. Her. Uh, the story of you know the great, great five times great grandfather, the drummer boy for George <laughs> Washington, know. and her father hand making violins. Right. And, and you know. Right. The, um, just amazing. So she was funny. That was touching. I mean, uh, I, I think the family is going to cherish that. I, I, I hope so, anyway. For a long time. And yeah. I hope other, our other hospice customers and our future hospice customers will think, hey, there's something that um, you know that that would be a great thing to remember. Not everybody's going to not everybody's going to be a star like Mitzi. She, no. She was really even proud of her makeup job. But the. And her toenails. And her, and her toenails. <laughs> and her toenails being polished. But um, so everybody doesn't have to be a star. No. Um, but those, but it, it would be a shame to lose family stories. It would be it a shame would. to not get those things out there. And sometimes there's just things that they want to have said, and this is a, a perfect opportunity to be able to do that. Well, thank you to Mitzi Addison. Um, I'm very proud to say that I, I, I consider her a friend. I hope she hope she's yeah. happy with me for, <laughs> for the time I spent with her. Um, thanks to her family for their cooperation to help yeah. put all that together, and Hospice for finding finding the right the right guinea pig for first legacy project. So I, I agree. I think that was super. Well, and especially thanks to the folks at home for joining us on Medicine Meadville. We'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.